Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 4 of the Spring Boot Security course. In this course we are going to discuss about HTTP basic authentication. Before we get started, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more software development courses that will sharpen your programming skills. HTTP basic authentication is the process in which the browser requests a username and a password in order to allow access to a specific resource. And it's called HTTP because this authentication process happens within the scope of an HTTP transaction. Now let's try to illustrate this whole process step by step. We are browsing from our computer and we are trying to make a request to our web server let's say to a new URL called home. Because we are not authenticated, the browser responds with a 401 status code, and then, which is unauthorized, and then with a www-authenticate header. This instructs our browser to provide a pop-up in which we can write the username and password needed to access the home resource. After we type in the username and the password, those values get concatenated and then encoded using base64. And then our browser sends the same request to home, but this time um, the HTTP request will have a new header, a new authorization header, which contains the value basic space and then the encoded username and password. And if those credentials were correct, then the web server will validate them and we will have um, a response with the actual resource and a status code of 200 which means OK. So you can see it's kind of a four step process in order to make this authentication uh, method work. How is the username and password encoded? Well, the process is not very difficult. When the login dialog appears, we need to write the username and a password. For example, let's say the username is Dan and the password is the word password. Okay, not very secure, but um, it will do the job. Then the name and the password are combined behind the scenes into something like username, uh, double uh, column, password. After this, uh, the browser will encode this concatenated string to base64 so the value will look something like this and then a new header will be added to the HTTP request and that header is an authorization and the value is basic space and then the encoded value. This is how HTTP basic handles uh, the encoding of username and password and then transmits the encoded value via an HTTP header. Now there are a couple of things that you need to know about the basic authentication. First of all, it is really, really simple. I mean, it's the simplest form of authentication that you can use inside your application. And it's simple because, you know, it relies only on HTTP. I mean, it doesn't require cookies, it doesn't require sessions, you don't have to write, you know, or to compose a login page because the login pop-up is displayed by the browser for you. So it's really, really easy to get started and to use it. Another thing that you need to know is that the transmitted credentials, so that encoded value, is not encrypted. Okay, so they are encoded with base64 in transit, but they're not hash or encrypted in any way, which means that that value is quite vulnerable because base64, you know, is just an encoding, it can be very easily be decoded, and then somebody can find out the actual values of the username and password. Luckily for us, if we use it, if you use basic authentication in conjunction with SSL and HTTPS, then we can provide some uh, level of confidentiality. Now, the credentials are still encoded with Base64 in transit, but because you are using SSL and because you are now uh, having HTTPS requests, um, people cannot grab that um, header in transit. And thus, by using it in conjunction with SSL, we can further secure the basic authentication process. And in fact, I've, in my opinion, I think it's mandatory to use basic authentication with SSL. Otherwise, uh, from my point of view, it's really not secure at all. 
Uh, another thing that you need to be aware of is that HTTP uh, basic authentication does not provide a method for a web server to log out. So we can log in and we can then send the correct authorization header, but there is no, you know, standard way of logging out. Of course, there are tips and tricks. For example, you can uh, send in an incorrect value in the authorization header and that will force it to log out, but there is no correct way of doing a logout. So this might limit the use of basic auth to some very simple cases. Um, and last but not least, uh, as you saw in this episode, this mechanism is not handled by your app. So in this case, uh, the authentication part of the security process is handled by the browser and via HTTP. You don't have to write any authentication logic. You don't have to write any web form. You don't have to put anything in a session or in a cookie. Now, if we draw a line and we try to reason about HTTP basic authentication, I would say that, you know, it is the simplest form of authentication. And in conjunction with SSL, uh, I would consider it to be a bare minimum for protecting non-sensitive resources. And keep in mind this word, non-sensitive. I mean, um, if you're planning, if your application deals with confidential information like banking data or uh, private user information like, um, you know, ID card number or addresses or phone numbers or contacts or stuff like this, then HTTP basic, in my opinion, it's not a good way to protect your application, even if you're using SSL. Uh, I would use, however, HTTP basic if you have like a real simple application, like a REST API, for example, because remember, you don't have the logout feature and you expose some very basic functionality and you store some information, like, I don't know, a user's nickname, uh, how many calories he burned, I don't know. If you create an application that, you know, manages uh, the calorie burnout for a particular person and you just store the nickname and, you know, the um, the values that, the calorie count that he burned out using exercise, then, okay, this might be a good way to protect your application because you're not storing anything sensitive. Otherwise, you know, for enterprise applications, I think uh, we have more secure ways to deal with the authentication. And I would not recommend you to use HTTP basic in that scenario. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.